Um, hello. In this um, uh, impromptu episode, uh, I just wanted to uh, relay something that happened to me earlier today. I was up in Kilburn, not far from where I live in here in London, uh, just talking to some of the brothers, uh, giving dower there as they do every Saturday when they can, and there's not a lockdown. And um, there's a new translation of the Quran uh, they had on their the, their desk there with the dower material, and uh, this is the uh, Quran here. So um, we hope you can make that out. It's uh, the Clear Quran, a thematic English translation by Dr. Mustafa Katab, and uh, is published by Aira, based here in London. Uh, one I one reason an Aira project. So this is an official Quran uh, published by them. And um, I just want to do a quick review of this new translation. Now, obviously, I haven't read it all, uh, but what I did do, perhaps a little bit mischievous, mischievously, I went straight to verse 434. Now, why would I do that? Well, I'll explain why in a minute. But I read the verse um, in the translation, and I'm aware of some of the Arabic issues, actually, having read um, a really good scholarly discussion of this very verse in this book in Jonathan Brown's Misquoting Muhammad, where I'm um, on page 274, 275, uh, 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 he discusses the various translations of this text and the, uh, the different motivations behind them and the problems it causes people, uh, this text in the Arabic and why they translate it differently. So I want to read it in my trusty uh, Abdul Halim English translation. And uh, this is a very well known verse. I'll read the whole of the verse. Uh, in context and then I will read this new clear Quran and you can see why I'm making a video of it hopefully. Um, so in this good reliable translation it says husbands should take good care of their wives with the bounties God has given to some more than others and with what they spend out of their own money. Righteous wives are devout and guard what God would have them guard in their husband's absence. If you fear high-mindedness from your wives, remind them of the teaching of God, then ignore them, then hit them. If they obey you, you have no right to act against them. God is most high and great. Now, the bit I was interested in is then hit them, that, that bit in the, in the Arabic. There's a note here, is, um, it says to the bottom of the page, this signifies a single slap, as is clear from the circumstances of the revelation of this verse. See also Abdul Halim, Understanding the Quran, pages 46 to 54. So he's referring to his own uh, a separate work where there's a, a quite a big discussion of that. So uh, I'm aware of the Arabic. The Arabic does have hit or strike. Um, that is the literal meaning of the word as translated here. Um, so let's, before I go on to how we interpret this verse, let me just read to you from this new clear Quran. So it should be even clearer. So what does it say? Men are care are the caretakers of women, as men have been provisioned by God over women and tasked with supporting them financially. And righteous women are devoutly obedient and, when alone, protective of what God has entrusted them with. And if you sense ill conduct from your women, advise them first. If they persist, do not share their beds. But if they still persist... Then discipline them light, gently, discipline them gently. But if they change their ways, do not be unjust to them. Surely God is most high or great. So if they still persist, then discipline them gently, discipline them gently. Um, this is obviously not a translation. This is uh, an interpretive view of what they want the English to say. At the bottom of the page, um, there's actually quite a helpful comment to this very verse. It says, disciplining one's wife gently is the final resort. The earliest commentators understood that this was to be light enough not to leave a mark. It should be done with nothing bigger than a tooth stick and should be uh, not be on the face. Prophet Muhammad said to his companions, do not beat the female servants of God. He said that honourable husbands do not beat their wives, and he himself never hit a woman or servant. If a woman feels her husband is ill-behaved, then she can get help from her guardian or seek divorce. Now that comment is fine, and that's indeed based on the earlier sources. What I have a problem with is when it says then discipline them lightly as part of the translation. Um, I don't know if this is going to come up. It's going to be easy to see or not. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway. Um, this, 
Okay, so what do we do? What's going on here? In um, Jonathan Brown's excellent book, he discusses, as I say, this very subject and the problems uh, that this verse has caused in the minds of some people, particularly in the West. And, um, and then he makes this helpful comment on page 274. Ironically, the unstated assumptions that many readers today would generally see as encasing the literal meaning of 434 were shared by none of the pre-modern ulama, the ulama, the Islamic scholars. They are, in fact, totally foreign to the Islamic tradition. So in other words, just reading this as a verse to beat your wife, so to speak, is totally foreign to the Islamic tradition, the pre-modern Islamic. So it's not a modernist issue that goes back many centuries. Reading the verse as an unambiguous legitimization of spousal abuse assumes that the Quran should be read in isolation and that duties should be derived from it unmediated. Yet no pre-modern Muslim school of thought ever advocated that except perhaps the early, the early Karajite extremists. And Islamic modernists who claim they do this today cannot manage to do so consistently. On the contrary, Muslim sects agree that the Quran had to be read through the prism of the Prophet's teachings as expounded by the ulama, who then disagreed endlessly on what those teachings should be. The ulama who articulated the Islamic tradition were men, Taken as a whole, however, their reading of 434 was characterised by neither the interests of patriarchy nor what is sometimes imagined to be an untempered indifference to violence. Rather, the most salient theme in the ulama's writings across the centuries has been one of restricting almost completely the apparent meaning of the verse. This seems to have appeared with the very first infallible interpreter of God's revelation, the messenger of God himself. Canonical Sunni Hadith collections quote the Prophet at first teaching his followers do not strike the female servants of God and that of course is what's referenced in the new translation only when his lieutenant Umar complained about the, Med uh, the Medinan women disrespecting their husbands as opposed to the more submissive Meccan wives to whom they were accustomed did the Prophet allow hitting them. The Hadith continues describing how a wave of 70, i.e. many women, subsequently came complaining to the Prophet about their husbands. This led them to declare that those men who... This led him, the Prophet, to declare that those men who beat their wives are not the best among you, adding, the best of you will not strike them. Um, and then he goes on about the Prophet's farewell sermon, uh, which says something uh, quite similar and talks about um, um, about how husband striking her, but only with a light blow that leaves no mark, uh, etc. But there's, it's a fascinating chapter. I suppose in this kind of amateur review that I'm giving, my, own, my, my issue with this is... However, it seems to have, the translation seems to have built in or added in the interpretive hermeneutic of the of what the English reader is supposed to read rather than a faithful translation of the Arabic, if that makes sense. The Arabic has strike or hit. The, uh, the commentary at the bottom, which explains um, the mitigating factors and the limiting factors is perfectly fine. But the translation seems to have, have in, uh, interposed, put in, done uh, the, that meaning rather than let the, the, the English faithfully and literally translate the Arabic. And I'm wondering if this translation uh, was, is done by a Canadian guy, if this um, translation really is aiming to um, create a translation that's acceptable to a Canadian Western audience rather than be very literal and faithful to the Arabic itself and um, and that might be seen by some as a criticism um, because I don't really when I come to a translation of the Quran I want to see a minimal amount of interpretation and a maximum amount of uh, translation so to speak now all translation is interpretation I get that but sometimes the interpretation seems to massively overwhelm the translation but arguably um, and that seems to be the case uh, with this translation. So I, I think in the light of that, I will not be recommending this translation. Um, I will stick with uh, this translation, Abdul Halim, 
uh, which, as I said before, is regarded very highly by Western uh, academics who uh, are aware of the translation issues. Um, and there we go. I, I, as I say, I haven't read all the Quran uh, in this new translation, so maybe the rest of it doesn't suffer from that, uh, arguably suffer from that problem. Um, so, uh, But I think having looked at that test verse to see how it deals with the Arabic, I, I'm, I'm less inclined, as I say, to have confidence that the rest of it will be um, a fairly literal translation and may well give me the opinions of uh, a more liberal Muslim interpretation uh, instead. Anyway, that's just my review. Thank you then.